Hey, this is Tyler White. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to create a fire lay. That's essentially how to set up your logs in a way so that once you add your nest to the fire, it just stays. So, stick with me. Okay, so when I teach fire to Boy Scouts, they're awesome in how eager they are to learn and how eager they are to smother out the fire. <laughs> so what I mean by that is this, they usually make a teepee, they get something on fire, and then they'll put something on it and smother it, and just totally choke it out. So if we take that failure and we transfer it into knowledge by talking about the fire triangle, it will make more sense. Essentially, fire is this. It's made of three things. Oxygen, fuel, and heat. The one thing that people fail the most with is oxygen. Heat we get. It's a lighter, it's a bow drill, it's friction fire, whatever. Fuel is the stuff that you're going to burn, and then oxygen is what's in the air. The higher altitude you're at, the less oxygen you're having, and the more compressed your bundles and stuff are, the less oxygen will be able to get to the fire process. So if we create a fire lay the right way, we should be able to just add our flaming bundle and then let it run and, it'll, and it will cook for us as opposed to hit it with a lighter, it starts, it stops, hit it with a lighter, it starts, I smother it. We want to get rid of that. Okay, so this fire lay is a variation of three other fire lays that I've taken from other people um, stuff I've learned from them. It's my own unique take on how to do this. I'm sure I'm not the only one that does something like this, but this is the way that I do it. So first thing that I want is dog legs. I took dog legs from writings. Uh, Nesimuk or George Washington Sears had writings in his book, Woodcraft, about dog legs. I researched what that was and basically figured out that it is this. Two logs on the bottom they give you kind of a platform so it raises your fire up off the ground. <clears throat> now, why that's important is this. It's, it's kind of twofold. One is it gives it the ability to suck its own oxygen from underneath because heat rises, there's a void or a vacuum underneath and the rising heat of your fire will draw oxygen from underneath and feed itself in a perpetual cycle. Two, because the ground's cold, okay? Cold is the antithesis of heat. And since heat is one of the elements of the fire triangle, we want to get away from cold, especially in the winter, especially early in the morning like it is right now, where the ground is really, really cold. Now, once we've got dog legs, you want to create a small platform of little sticks. Whatever diameter, doesn't too much matter. Just something that can hold your next level up once you put it on top of your platform. long enough. Now once I've done this, essentially I have this nice flat platform that I can put whatever I'm going to build on top of. If you like the teepee technique, go for it. Put it up here. If you like that log cabin technique, go for it. Put it up here. I don't like the log cabin because it tends to smother oxygen from the sides. I don't like the teepee because it will always tip over. What I like to do is what I call a shelf technique or a tipped over teepee technique if you will. I'll put a big log in the back of it, okay? And then I will build a teepee that's tipped over right here or on top of a shelf. And I'll just kind of continue to add and continue to place pieces right along this tipped over teepee, okay? So it creates this little pocket that we're gonna use right there. If you're gonna add feather sticks to your, to your uh, your your lay this is where you add it to so let me feather stick this real quick
So I'll add my feather sticks right there on the side. And what that will do is after my bundle goes in, it will help to grab that flame and hold it long enough that the heat can push the water out of the, the supposedly dry sticks that I have and then start them on fire. Everything that you've got, for the most part, has at least 10, 15% water in it. A lot of fire smoke is actually vapor. So when the heat sits here and just kind of cooks for a while, it's pushing the water vapor out of your fuel, which gives it the ability to mix with, it, with oxygen and gain more heat. Because remember, if it's wet, it's cold. When it's not wet, it becomes dry, which lets it be warm, which helps that fire triangle, triangle out again. So I'm gonna put another feather stick right here, and then we'll be able to start the basics of the fire lay. How not to do a feather stick and shave it all off on accident. Okay, so I've got my fire lay. Two dog legs, preferably aligned with the wind if you have any, and we don't, so I just kind of pointed it at the camera. A flat platform so that you can have oxygen that comes up from the bottom where your dog legs are. A large log or a shelf on the back. Little sticks on the front, a couple feather sticks, maybe some tinder, a nest, whatever you want to add to it. And now we're ready to start our uh, tinder and kindling Put it right here and let this burn. A note on the sides of these logs. Notice these aren't huge, giant logs. None of them are much bigger than the diameter of my wrist and the length of my forearm. The reason being is this is going to be a small cooking fire. We're gonna use it for heat, we're gonna cook with it, then we're gonna put it out. If I were to add big, huge, lumpy logs, this thing's gonna just burn into coals and sit there all night long, and that can be dangerous. Um, that's not the purpose. Now maybe that's, that, maybe that's a purpose at nighttime and you wanna lay next to a fire with a long fire, but that's not the purpose here. So if you're just doing a cooking fire or something short, don't make your logs any bigger than the diameter of your wrist and the length of your forearm. Now the way I'm gonna do this fire is just a little flint and steel. I have some juniper bark with a little bit of birch bark in the back and some really fine juniper bark in the middle. The fine juniper bark is gonna hold the ember as it heats up the outer juniper bark that's a little more coarse is going to hold the flame and then it's going to hit that birch bark which is going to work kind of like a candle to hold it. You don't have to have the birch bark in order to make this work. I have some so I'm going to use it. And this is just char material. In some other videos we have we'll show you how to do flint and steel with charred material. This, in this case it's just little chunks of cotton uh, you can char any kind of plant material for the most part if it's dried. Got a little spark in there. Okay, now I'm not getting too busy on this because my ember has to grow, and as it grows, it is drying out the material adjacent to it, which is getting rid of that 10% water vapor I talked about earlier. So even though there's some smoke coming out of here, there's also some water vapor in it. Now if we just introduce oxygen, one of the three parts of the fire triangle, to my heat, which is my ember, and my fuel, which is the uh, nesting material, we'll have fire.
and soft until it gets bigger, and then as it gets bigger, I'll blow hard. I've almost got some flame. It's close enough, and I'm gonna add it right here and finish blowing on it inside of that little nest so I don't have to move it around or catch sparks on my hand. Once we've got flame, we're just gonna kind of tend it just a little bit. Essentially my uh, tinder nest here, gonna light the feather sticks on fire, put a little more directly above it, not too much. And then watch the oxygen. I'm not getting too much of a hurry because, again, the flame from the tinder bundle is drying out the material around it. And as you can see, it's not really blowing out. It's not too much smoke, which is good. It lets me know that there is oxygen getting to the fire. If it's super smoky, either you're not getting oxygen or there's too much humidity in the fuel. And the real solution for that is either get better fuel or give it more oxygen. But essentially, as you can tell, it's done. And I don't really have to do much more now that it's kind of up and running. And the reason why it's running like this is because it can feed itself with its own oxygen. I don't have to sit there and blow on it. And the reason why it's feeding itself again is because heat rises, and when heat rises, it creates a vacuum of air underneath, which draws air underneath that platform, and that is then jet fueling the fire from the bottom up. And as you can see, there's not a lot of smoke in this at all. It's a very pure burning fire because we have quality fuel and because we have lots of oxygen coming up from the bottom. There's a lot of different ways that you can make a fire lay. This is my favorite. I use it like 90% of the time. Um, go out and try it. Make sure that when you get done with your fire, you put water on it and the coals are cold to the touch so that you can leave it alone and know that you're not gonna accidentally have a little fire. This fire was started with a coal or an ember, so keep that in mind. You can latently, accidentally start fires if you have even one little coal that blows away from your fire. All right, so this has been how to make a, uh, a fire lay. We did two dog legs, a platform, a large log in the back, and tipped over our fire teepee or our shelf. I just did a little flint and steel fire, added it to it. Because of the oxygen feeding from underneath, it is pure warm. I'm not sitting in a bunch of smoke. That's how I like it. If this has been valuable to you, please hit the subscribe button or hit the like button or both. If you have any more questions about some of the other techniques used or anything else like this regarding survival, check out our other videos. And thank you for watching.